Working out too much can lead to pain and swelling in your joints, overuse injuries, and a reduction in strength and performance. Or at least that's according to people that believe in the concept of overtraining. But not everyone believes in overtraining. For example, a very popular bodybuilder, C.T. Fletcher, has consistently claimed that overtraining is a myth, claiming there's no such thing as overtraining and instead there's only undereating. But if we take our own opinions out of it and look at the research, it clearly shows that overtraining does in fact exist. Some of the studies show that overtraining affects anywhere from 7% to 20% of athletes per season. Meanwhile, other data indicates that it impacts up to 31% of college athletes per year. But these are athletes that train much more than the average person. And you have to remember that if you don't train hard enough, you won't see any results. So what's the sweet spot and what would be considered overtraining? Unfortunately, it's not that simple because everyone is different. So there's no exact number of reps or time spent in the gym that you shouldn't exceed. And to complicate things even further, many people often confuse overtraining with something known as overreaching. Now, even though they share similarities, overtraining and overreaching are definitely not the same. Overreaching is a temporary condition that occurs in response to heavy or intense weight loads, and it only requires a relatively short amount of time to recover from. Even when going by its definition, we can see that it is possible to recover from a state of overreaching within a two week period. So to simplify, if you're overreaching, it means that you're pushing your body to a point that is beyond its current recovery capacity. But when you simply take some time off, your body will be able to catch up and recover from a state of overreaching pretty fast. That's why it can even be argued that the condition of overreaching is a relatively normal and harmless result of the training process. So an example of something that could cause overreaching would be doing a high volume three week training phase followed by a one week phase of rest. You'll likely overreach during the high volume phase since you'll either be doing a lot more reps or sets to achieve that higher volume, but as long as it's not excessive, your body should recover from it very well, especially with a week off. Now, overtraining, on the other hand, is different. In general, you go from overreaching to overtraining when you push your body to such an extent that it's hard for you to recover even after weeks or months. In fact, it's common for athletes that are in an overtrained state to take months or even possibly years to completely recover. The reason why overtraining is so hard to recover from is because it disrupts homeostasis to such a significant extent that your body can't effectively handle it. Homeostasis is a state of balance within the body. It occurs when all your bodily processes are working together and they're regulated in a way in which internal conditions are balanced, stable, and relatively constant. Now, it isn't bad to temporarily disrupt homeostasis. In fact, that's what you do whenever you lift weights or do cardio. You place a stressor on your body that acts as a shock to your system. And as a result, your body will adapt and make changes so that it can better handle a similar stressor in the future. In other words, you'll build muscle, endurance, and you'll get stronger. But when homeostasis is disrupted chronically, which is the case with overtraining, your body won't have the time and the ability to get back to a state of equilibrium. This can lead to a wide range of symptoms. For example, overtraining can cause acute and chronic immunosuppression, which means it suppresses your immune system, making you more likely to catch a cold, get an infection, or get sick. You can also be affected mentally. Mental health issues like depression, anxiety, lowered libido are all common side effects of overtraining. And interestingly, it works both ways. Physically, overtraining can increase mental stress and vice versa, more mental stress can increase the chances of overtraining. I'll go over that more in a minute, but another obvious issue you'll run into as a result of overtraining is decreased performance. This is usually the most common way to check if you're in a state of overtraining. Even though you might be training hard and supposedly doing everything right, your performance and your output during your workouts isn't showing it. So either you make no gains at all, or even more likely, you might have a reduction in your athletic performance even though you're working hard. Another thing that can happen to your body is weight loss. This usually happens because overtraining can reduce appetite. That might sound counterintuitive because you would assume it would increase appetite, but that's actually not the case. Overtraining can cause hormonal influences that make you feel less hungry and reduce your desire to eat. 
You can also develop sleep problems because overtraining overstimulates the sympathetic nervous system, which is your body's fight or flight response, making it harder for you to fall asleep and stay asleep. On top of that, most people are already pretty familiar with the side effect of having a higher risk of injury from overtraining. This can happen for a variety of different reasons, including the fact that overtraining leads to excess fatigue. This excess fatigue impairs coordination and the ability to maintain proper form, which is very likely to lead to an injury. Aside from that, like I said in the beginning, overtraining has adverse effects on the quality of your connective tissues, which includes your tendons and ligaments. This also makes it more likely that you'll get an injury like a hamstring strain, shin splints, or another very common one, patellofemoral syndrome, which is actually the most common cause of knee pain. Aside from all of that, when you work out too much, you'll also experience chronic muscle soreness. You'll feel more irritable, and you'll experience a decline in your motivation to train. Keep in mind that even though all of these are the most common symptoms of overtraining, it doesn't mean you'll necessarily experience all these symptoms at once. Usually, you'll only notice a couple of them. Now, the big problem is that even when athletes do recognize these symptoms, they usually don't pay them much attention at all, which ironically may have been the cause of them overtraining in the first place. They might have ignored things like a nagging injury, excessive fatigue, low libido, elevated anxiety levels, or a decline in performance. And that's the catch-22 with overtraining. Usually it happens when you're most motivated to reach your goals and you're not paying attention to how your body is reacting. So as weird as it sounds, even though motivation and that drive to see results can be really helpful in some cases, when it's taken to the extreme, it can backfire and lead to overtraining. Now, I already mentioned earlier that other than physical stressors, there are also mental stressors that can lead to overtraining, especially when you experience mental and physical stress at the same time. That's because for your body, it doesn't matter where the stress comes from. Whenever you exceed its ability to handle that stress for extended periods, you'll disrupt homeostasis and run into problems. And we have evidence of this in action. For example, in a review study published in the Journal of Sports Medicine, the researchers noticed that the stress can come from not only training, but also from physiological stress as well as illness. That's why overtraining is more likely to become an issue when you go through a mental hardship, such as the loss of a loved one, financial difficulties, or relationship problems. This is why overtraining can happen at seemingly random times when you're not training any differently than usual. Even if your workout routine stays more or less the same, so you don't add on more reps, sets, or lift heavier weights, you can still be bogged down by overtraining if you're under a lot of mental stress. This is why a good coach not only pays attention to how an athlete is training, but also how external factors like their life, sleep quality, diet, supplement regimen, and stress levels are impacting their recovery. But you might not even have a coach. So the question is, what can you do to assess whether you're overtraining or not? And are there some preemptive actions that you can take to avoid it in the first place? Well, first remember that it's fine to push yourself out of your comfort zone and even overreach because as long as you give your body the time and the resources it needs to recover, pushing yourself is what will help your body adapt to the higher level of physical stress and lead to improvements. If you keep your training volume really low because you're afraid of overreaching, you'll most likely see either very limited or no results at all. In fact, studies show that there tends to be a dose response relationship between training volume and muscle growth. So the more sets, reps, and weight you use, the more muscle you'll tend to gain. So sticking to a low amount of volume is definitely not the solution. But with that said, this dose response relationship between volume and muscle growth only holds true as long as you can actually fully recover from your workouts. So I want you to imagine it as a bell curve. A well-known sports scientist, Eric Helms, actually depicts this bell curve in his book. You can see that there's an optimal training volume, and if you go above or below that, you'll impair your results. So to find out if you're overtraining, start by asking this question. Am I making progress at the gym? Am I increasing the weight I can use, or am I at least able to perform more reps with a given weight load? Now, there's a number of reasons why you might not be making progress, so this is definitely not the only question you wanna ask, but it is the first question because if the answer is yes and you are improving, then by definition, you are not in an overtrained state. Now, if you have hit the point where you're not making any additional progress, ask yourself the following questions. Am I consuming enough calories and protein? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I following a solid workout program? Am I training hard? Am I focusing on applying progressive overload? Am I consistent with my workout and my nutrition plan? Is my lifting technique and my form on point? 
Is my circadian rhythm good? So do I train, eat, and sleep around the same times each day? So those are the questions. And if you answered no to one of those questions, we'll fix that first. That's likely the reason you're not making progress. But if you answered yes to all those questions, there are most likely two reasons that you're not seeing progress. The first and the more common reason is that you're not doing enough training volume. So the solution with that is to train harder and to try to increase your sets, reps, and weight load used over time. The other reason could be that you're doing too much volume and you're overextending the ability of your body to recover from your workouts. In this case, not only do you answer yes to all the questions I just went over, but you're also most likely experiencing at least a couple of the symptoms like getting sick more often, feeling more fatigue, and experiencing more injuries. Luckily, you don't have to wait until you're in an overtrained state to start reversing this. Ideally, you don't want it to happen at all. So to avoid overtraining, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you give yourself enough time and enough nutrients to fully recover. The other thing that you'll want to be extra careful of is doing a very high amount of sets and reps per workout. Even though lifting really heavy weights can technically lead to overtraining, it very rarely does so on its own. Overtraining is almost always the result of doing too many sets and reps at a high enough intensity. The truth is your body can generally handle a high training intensity very well. For example, research shows that power lifters can make excellent progress just by maxing out one rep every day, followed by five sets of three reps using a very heavy weight load. It's typically only when you use a decent weight load in combination with a ton of sets and reps that you might end up overtraining. This is actually one reason why overtraining is more common for CrossFit athletes rather than Olympic weightlifters. The CrossFit athletes focus on components of volume like sets and reps, while Olympic weightlifters focus more on intensity or weight load. So now that you understand that, you can see why overtraining for pure strength athletes like weightlifters and bodybuilders is uncommon and actually lower than what most people believe. Most weightlifters simply don't do enough sets and reps and overall volume to reach that point. If their progress stalls, it's generally not because of overtraining, but more likely the result of something like not getting enough sleep, following a poor exercise routine, an insufficient protein or calorie intake, and so on. On top of that, before a bodybuilder or weightlifter overtrains, there are generally two things that will happen first that prevents them from overtraining. The first thing is that most lifters will give up mentally way before they can push themselves into a state of physical overtraining. And the second thing is that their connective tissues will degrade. That's because muscles can heal much faster than tendons and ligaments can. So when doing a lot of volume, overuse injuries tend to pop up in joints long before the muscle tissue starts to be overwhelmed. It's only if you can push through the mental discomfort and do enough volume without suffering overuse injuries that you might be able to overtrain train. But again, that's rare for weightlifters. So yes, overtraining does exist. It is a real thing. And it's especially common among athletes that do a high amount of volume, such as endurance athletes or CrossFit athletes. But it's much less common for regular people that go to the gym. So that about wraps it up. I really hope this helped you understand more about the concept of overtraining, how likely it is, and its opposite but equally detrimental concept of undertraining. To see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if you're not quite sure how to set up your training and nutrition plan to see optimal results, head on over to my website where you can get a customized nutrition plan based on your preferences, a 42-day workout plan with a full video exercise library, and a coach to make any adjustments and always make sure that you're doing everything correctly. To find out more, click the link in the description below, or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. See you guys soon.